Welcome. welcome! So welcome to our kale and cabbage masterclass. We're going to tell you why it's so important to eat these vegetables and show you three delicious ways in which to cook them. However, before we start, we're going to tell you this video is sponsored by our new book, The Veg Box. Massive shout out to everyone who's pre-ordered it. It is a life-changing book to empower you to cook delicious recipes with vegetables. How have we sponsored our own video? Because uh, we just have, because it's class. Anyway, it's a great book. 10 most popular veg, 10 ways using 10 ingredients or less. Thank you to all of pre-order. Link down below to pre-order. It is a life-changing book. We are so proud. Anyway, back to the vid. Okay, we're going to show you three delicious ways to use kale and cabbage. But we put these both together in the same category because they're both dark leafy greens and a lot of people don't necessarily know what to do with them. First and foremost, kale is the number one most nutritious food according to the Nutrient Density Aggregate Index. It is most nutrients pound per pound, super high in chlorophyll and vitamin K and iron and calcium and so many different minerals as well as vitamins. Two main varieties which we're gonna show you today is curly kale, this is a traditional Irish variety grown in uh, the Northern Hemisphere. And this one here is Cavalonero, also known as dinosaur kale, bubble kale or uh, black Russian kale. Both are really tasty and nutritious. On their own, they can come across a little bland. Today, we're gonna to show you three ways where they're genuinely delicious. First one, we're gonna show you to make kale crisps. Great one for anyone to eat greens. We're gonna make a lovely kale pesto, which might sound ridiculous, but our friend Sophia is gonna come in and genuinely test it. And lastly, we are gonna make a charred, char grilled cabbage with teriyaki sauce. Okay, so first up we're gonna make is our kale crisps. Delicious, easy, practical snack, banging full of nutrients and a great way to kind of upgrade your crisps. So, many different varieties of kale. This one is known as Cavalo Nero, also known as Black Black Russian, Black Russian kale. kale. Um, and this one typically is known as the traditional curly kale. So we've literally got 100 grams of kale, and we're gonna shred it, just take it literally off the bone. Like, literally take away. <laughs> I always think off the bone, it sounds like it's like, Steak. we were out earlier and we caught it, and we ripped it apart, and then we're taking it off the bone. But this is, um, literally you're just taking away the main vein and you're taking away the leaves. <laughs> that just sounds weird. I think it makes it sound more kind of like <clears throat> meaty and more alive. It has more. Uh, but we're ripping it up into smaller little pieces because, you know, you want small little bite sizes. And surprisingly, you might go kale crisps. You might think, oh my God, this is like some weird vegan hippie food. But uh, these do actually taste crunchy and crispy and they, it's really easy to infuse them with flavour. Yeah, and they're a great my, way. Even my kids like these. So it's a great way to kind of get more nutrients into kids or people who don't like vegetables. And as we said in the intro, kale is the most nutrient density of, nutrient dense of all food. So it really is banging. And this is a great way to get more in it into you. Okay, we've got about 80 grams of kale, just little kale, broken up kale. For our dressing, we're simply gonna add we're gonna, Two little, tablespoons. we're gonna add a little bit of oil. The oil will just help more caramelization and make it crispier. So that's two tablespoons. We're gonna go with two tablespoons of tamari also. You don't need to add tamari, but this is gonna add a nice umami note. Okay, for that nice smoked flavor, just to move it away from that kind of sulfurous brassica note, we have some smoked paprika. So I'm taking kind of a, you know, a nice pinch of paprika. And try to get the smoked one if you can, as opposed to the sweet one. And we like a bit of spice, so I'm gonna go in with probably a quarter of a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. So that will add a nice bit of heat to it. Take and finally, hands. I'm gonna go with a tiny pinch of salt, which is gonna help break down the cell walls of the kale. So here you just really wanna massage it and really try to disperse that flavor. Imagine you're doing a massage and you're using the oil as the main lubricant to disperse the flavors. Okay, I'm just gonna pop it now onto a baking tray. So literally just spread it out nice and wide. We've preheated the oven to 100 degrees, and Is I'm living- Celsius or Fahrenheit? Celsius. Preheated the oven to 100 degrees Celsius, and I'm gonna bake it for probably 15 to 20 minutes, and wait and you see, it's gonna be amazing. Okay, kale crisps are ready. You are in for a treat. Well, actually, we are. So they don't look like much, but taste, taste the crispiness. Look, get in here and hear the sound. So it is crispy, they do actually taste like crisps. Uh, and as they're allowed to cool, they become even crispier. The moisture will evaporate. And wait till I show you, look, look, look. Maybe you're gonna have to come in close on this. Okay, Tana's a little dubious. She's gonna come in and try them. Welcome, Tana! Oh no, right in the center stage. They are very crispy, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Oh, they're amazing. Oh, there's a lot of flavor for kale. Mm -hmm. Such a gorgeous way of eating kale. It's a very nice paprika. Mm. Our next trick, we're gonna make a really simple, delicious kale pesto pasta. So the idea of kale pasta might sound, but it makes the most incredibly bright green color that packed full of nutrients in a great way of kind of, again, get more of this nutritious greens into people. First thing we're gonna do, boil the kettle. Into a large saucepan, we are adding our boiling water. Okay, always when cooking pasta, make sure to season your water. Go with lots of salt. It'll help season your pasta from within. 
Take Great. 250 grams of pasta of choice. We're gonna go with spaghetti, because I think just think spaghetti and pasta go really, really And good. once again, use brown or white pasta. We're gonna use white here just to make it look prettier, but brown is much higher in fiber, so that's whole meal, whole wheat, whole spelt. Okay, we're gonna steam the kale while the, pes the pasta is cooking. So again, take your kale. If you can get cavolo nero, I just think it's darker, we're gonna end up with a more richer, vibrant green pesto. It's also known as dinosaur kale and also black Russian kale or bubble kale. So it's really nice. This one's one bubble of those kale. nutrients because it's dark leafy greens indicated it's super high in chlorophyll. So really good for red, red blood cell production and loads of different other nutrients within your body. We have approximately 50, 60 grams. You'll note our pasta has kind of submerged down. It's all under water. We're gonna put this off and cook it in the steam. And literally steam it for probably five minutes while the pasta is cooking. Okay, we're gonna make the pasta really simple. We literally make probably 20,000 units of pasta per week. So we know our way around pasta. So ideally you have 50 grams of steamed greens, such as kale. You could also use cabbage for this as well. We're gonna use kale just because it's so beautiful and it's in season right at the moment. So in it goes. Don't even worry if there's a little bit of moisture in it. 100 gram of nut of choice. I'm using a toasted cashew nut. You could use pine nut, almond, walnut, etc. In it goes. Uh, in terms of every pesto is gonna have garlic in some form. You can go with two cloves if you like loads of garlic. We're gonna go with one because we don't want it too high in garlic. Okay, to make this, you can go, we go with 150 mil of, we go with 150 mil of liquid of choice. If you wanna go full fat, 150 mil of a neutral tasting olive oil. However, if you wanna go lower fat, go half and half. So I'm gonna go with 75 of a neutral olive oil. Or sunflower oil or, or vegetable sunflower oil. Or um, sunflower um, 75 ml of water. Okay, I'm gonna go with one teaspoon of salt. Start with three quarters. If it's a coarse salt, you go with that. And then juice of half a lime. Or if you don't have half a lime, you could do one tablespoon of vinegar of choice. So pesto is quite a personal thing. If you do like it kind of bitty and more texture, only pulse it. However, if you want it more homogenous, give it more time. And, and the homogenous means like smooth and just creamy. Uniform in texture. So if you do want to give it longer, you're gonna have that more vibrant green color. Okay, I do love this, me and my kids love this. How do you know when pasta's cooked? Oh, <laughs> yeah, right. Let's try again. I right, genuinely, this, this is how uh, we used to. Oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> Take three. Maybe this one's cooked. Are you ready? <laughs> oh. <laughs> we need some pasta for the dish. Take four, okay, you ready? Okay, this time it's gonna stick, right, ready? Yay, the pasta's cooked! And literally, this is so easy, take a slotted spoon and just drain it straight into the pan. That bit of starch that's remaining on the pasta will just help bring this dish together more. Okay, pasta is on, we're adding in our pesto. Be generous with the pesto, you want loads of this, really covered, it gets such a vibrant, beautiful color. And the idea of kale pesto might sound ridiculous, but trust us, this is genuine. This is delicious. really, like, we really do know our way around pesto, and this tastes fantastic. Okay, and finally, like, it presents fantastic. It's super vibrant. I find chili flakes on top of it just, if you come in here close, you, they just give a beautiful contrast of color, and they really make the whole dish pop. Okay, many people think kale pesto sounds ridiculous, but trust us, this tastes fabulous. So, just to show, we have a neutral coming in, our friend Sophia, and she's gonna give a full Yay! Yay! Dun, 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 it looks dun, good. Dun, no, you got dun, a lovely dun. white top, be careful. Oh, <laughs> don't slobber it. Oh I, I, my God, your pasta skills are being tested. Is it hot? Uh, uh, it's uh, medium easier. hot. <laughs> You're doing great. You're doing Yay! Great. Well, well, we gotta wait for the verdict. What do you think? It's, it's, it's amazing, I like it very much. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Welcome to crispy charred cabbage. This is a delicious, aromatic, one of the favorite ways to cook cabbage, and a lot of people go, cabbage, oh, yeah. Yeah. this is bang, and it really, really is. This is such a good, okay, so we're gonna take, first we're taking the likes of a Savoy cabbage. Okay, into a hot, white bottom nonstick pan, two tablespoons of oil, so a generous amount of oil. Just spread it around. This is just gonna ensure we get nice char. Take our cabbage and chop it into quarters. Remove any excess leaves. So we're gonna pop this straight down. We want it to burn. We're gonna get a nice, generous pinch of salt in there. I'm gonna fry this for about four minutes on each side until it chars. Once it starts to smoke, just turn it over. You'll see it really has charred nicely. So just, we wanna char both sides. Okay, time to go from frying to steaming. As the smoke starts to come, we're gonna add in about four tablespoons of water. And we're gonna trap it. 
So the reason we want to do is that heat transfers quicker and moisture, so that steam is going to cook into the center of the cabbage while not getting in the way of that caramelized, that lovely char on the bottom. Okay, time to mix our dressing. I've got a tablespoon of maple syrup, and on top I'm going two tablespoons of tamari or soy sauce, juice of half a lime. We're gonna take the lid off and just allow the moisture to evaporate. A way to know if your cabbage is cooked all the way through, take a fork and it should be able to go in nicely into the center. Okay, time to bring the dish together. I have some chopped ginger, I'm gonna add that in on top to start to spread it around. I've got a clove of garlic I'm gonna add in also. This is to start to add more flavor. And I'm gonna start to slowly add in our dressing. So just a little bit at a time. Oh, look at that, nice. To try to finish this dish, I've got some sesame. I'm gonna add in a generous portion of sesame in here. Really gonna add in lots. As these start to toast, they're really gonna add lovely flavor to it. This is a little bird's eye chili. Be careful with this little lad. Chop it nice and finely. Okay, there you have a go. delicious, crispy, elegant char grilled cabbage. I'm going to taste it too. Such a lovely way to eat cabbage. Really it. elegant. Wow. Bang with flavour. Delicious. This is a very elegant dish. There you have it. Kale, cabbage. Our new book, The Veg Box, it's available to pre order. We've taken the 10 most common veg, including kale and cabbage. We've done it in 10 ways using 10 ingredients or less. This is honestly a life changing book. It's all about empowering you to get more of your vegetables, to save money. Our guarantee is that within a month, you will save back the price of the book. Thank you for watching. Thank you for everyone who has, thank you, everyone who has pre-ordered our book. We are extremely grateful. Uh, link down below and thank you for watching this. Lots of love. Bye. Cheers.